If it were not for the last job done today, this would have to be the day of the manhole. More are being delivered to add to the several already in Cornerstone hardware. Forgot to mention that yesterday the grubby, beat up puddle jumper was replaced by a new one with orange trim. The big event of the day was when the Komatsu excavator went up the main center ramp and started digging away at the dirt around it, exposing the retaining wall. It was like the top knight in the king's castle was attempting to destroy the drawbridge, the last ditch effort and in doing so found that he ended up by himself on the enemy side of the moat. The gold arrow points to where the dirt was on and over the retaining wall. Usually on Saturday not that much goes on in the way of new activities, so it's a good time to say something about the puddle jumpers that have been put to good use on this project. The first photo is of the old Polaris that we would see going a little too fast from one work spot to another. It seems to have been replaced recently by a new orange Kubota. The second picture is of the Kubota. Incidentally, I learned that UTV stands for Utility Task Vehicle. Maybe the Polaris had some car trouble. I hope nothing to do with speeding. Cornerstone rents a lot of the vehicles used in their work. One of the outfits that they rent from is Herc, which used to be part of Hertz Rentals. They split off about five years ago. The third photo is of the rainwater vault. Like icing on a cake, they are adding a trim around the top and they are starting with forms and good old hammer and nails. I think of it as three-quarter round molding added to the cabinet. That's for you sawdusters. There's a story there. We were pleased to see the asphalt paving equipment all ready to go this morning. The first photo shows the first few feet being put down. Both the big and little rollers were used to flatten out the surface. I get a kick out of hearing the very low frequency sound coming from the rollers. You don't have to see them to know when they are operating. The second picture is of the near completed bus lanes. In a little more than a year, we'll see the buses. The last photo shows the considerable work on the foundation wall, joining the north and south portions of the classrooms. Another pour is due there in a few days. Yesterday, I guessed that another pour was due soon. It sure was. It was a long way from being a really big pour, but it did use a boom. It took place this morning. It helped to join the north and south sections of the classroom foundations. See the photo. The second photo shows some strange task of putting one of the hundreds of 10-inch diameter turquoise pipes inside of a steel pipe. Check the gold arrow to see what I'm referring to. One mystery solved and then another comes along. George Poudre says that putting the green pipe inside the steel pipe is for the protection of the green pipe. This is done where the pipe goes under, but not very far under, a driving surface. Indeed, this was the case of many Somerset driveways where we used to live. It was more serious there because the broken pipe was normally part of a water system under pressure. Incidentally, the pipes have disappeared while I write this. The new mystery has to do with the five square holes in the roof of the water vault. But if you see what I see, you will be just as perplexed as I am. Five circular containers containing dirt and rocks, one in each square hole. Why? Who? What? Is it a test of some sort? Late yesterday, there was a pink spray painted word Harris and an arrow emblazoned on the black asphalt. This morning, there was a single wide portable office located in that spot. I believe that Harris is a contractor's good buddy sump contractor to provide all the necessary engineering and whatever else a major contractor needs and cannot provide for themselves. Some kind of tarp was installed on the bus lane safety fence. Some blue, some black, and a small portion red. I do not know why. Maybe to beautify? Ralph's boom arrived about lunchtime. That got things in the south end moving. They first poured the three-quarter round and then started filling in the spaces between each of the 100 or so slabs. See the first photo. Then they filled the square holes so that they would become round holes. Regarding the circles and square holes, this is from my son-in-law. I believe the circular rings may be the cardboard product known as sonotube, concrete forms for pouring cylinders. They may have backfilled the sonotubes 
as a way of shoring up the cylinder and keep it from collapsing when they pour the perimeter around it. Just a guess. Yes, just slice off five cylinders about six inches high. I bet that's the size diameter of the sauna tube is the size of a manhole cover. There isn't any reason that the concrete can't go on the outside of the sauna tube. This makes sense. After the pour, remove the sand and rocks and add it to the dirt to cover the whole thing. Instead of a square hole, you now have a round hole. Or you could have bought some square manhole covers in the first place. This violates the headlines rule, but there were no events that were headline worthy. A previous email was partly about a pipe within a pipe. This is done when the pipe, at A, is near a surface that is frequently driven over. The first photo shows a rainwater drain pipe. The fire hydrant, B, is labeled for reference in the southwest area of the playing field. The consequence of not doing this is a cracked pipe. As you know, there is plenty of resolution in most of these pictures, so you can zoom in to get a better look. The second photo is of one of the strongest foundation walls I've ever seen. Not really 99%. It's just looked that way. The form should come off soon, but first the poor. The first photo shows the water tank truck testing the drain system on the far side of the field. The second picture is one of the continually muddy areas. The big arrow shows where a little pump is moving the water into a small man-made ditch. The Baker tank was disconnected from the system last week sometime. It was moved to a storage area today. See the picture. The water from up the mountain has to go somewhere. There was another visit by a boom today. It was used in the car lanes. All that we can see in the third photo was the one long green tentacle moving the concrete slurry to all the right places. It was another very nice Sunday, so we decided to do some talus exploration. First, we drove down the hill to the place where all the utility boxes are. The photo from there shows some landmarks that can be seen from both down below and up above. These are the new concrete box on the corner of the vault and the tall precast manhole. The second photo is that view from South Ridge, seventh floor. The third photo is of a particular foundation wall that is full of rebar, about half by weight, if not by volume. The pour that took place this morning included this wall. 